time is it? You know what time it is. It's time to hit that subscribe button. You know just where it's at. Right down there. Right down there. And it's time to follow my Instagram. It's Geekly Amanda. G E E K L Y Amanda. It's the same on Twitter. Make sure to follow me there too. And some get this fresh video started. This is a long video. It is 26 minutes or whatever, but I saw it the other day and I was like, oh, I want to react to that. It just came out like a few weeks ago. I think it was a few weeks ago this video came out. And uh, it's about is who are the Tamil people? So yeah, I saw it like the other day in my little suggested videos and everything. But then someone on my live was like, you should react to it. And I was like, you know what? I saw that, was interested in the other day, was gonna go back and check it out. So you're right, I should react to it. So y'all ready to see this with me? We're gonna find out all about the Tamil people. Y'all ready? Go! This video is sponsored by Curiosity Stream. I got my got coffee access and everything, Nebula, this is gonna be a long one. service made by your favorite educational creators when you uh, sign up for 25 minutes, Stream, 25 minutes long. We can do it, let's do it. Y'all ready? It's South India. Home to the biodiversity hotspots, the Western and Eastern Ghats, the Bengal Tiger, the Nilgiri Tar, the Indian Elephant, and whatever this creature is. <laughs> Here is also is. the cradle of Tamil culture. Oh, how Today about there are about 80 million Tamils in oh, the world. Wow. That's more than there are French, Colombians, or Kenyans. And that's just a Most little Tamils part live of in India. North and East Sri Lanka, or in the Southern Indian that's state of Tamil Nadu. Literally, Tamil country. Tamil Nadu is now a state in modern India, but for thousands of years, Tamilagam, or the homeland of the Tamils, was much larger and ruled by independent kingdoms. Oh, all right. Tamil culture is the last surviving classical civilization because they've managed to keep their beliefs, culture, and language intact for over 2,000 years. But Very who are the Tamils? What is their story? And That's what we're here to what find What does out. it have to do with $700 billion golden coconuts? What? Well, let's find out. <laughs> Golden coconuts! 700 billion of them! Well, we're gonna find out, huh? The Tamils, maybe more than any other people, are in love with their language. Oh. Tamil writing has been dated as far back as the 6th century oh, BC wow. from the archaeological site Kairadi in India and from the 2nd century BC at Punakari in Sri Lanka, so making it Lanka. one of the oldest datable languages still in use. Tamils often call their language Tamartai, which Tamil means type. the Tamil mother. Oh, it's okay. more important Tamil to the Tamil identity than land, race, or religion. They're, they're, if you want to have the most intense conversation of your entire life, just go ask a Tamil person anything about the Tamil language. Oh. Tamils also take pride in the independent origin of their language. See, you can roughly divide India linguistically in half. North Indians generally speak languages descended from Sanskrit okay. and Indo-European languages. The, the this Hindi? language family stretches from North India all the way over to Iceland. South Indian languages like Tamil belong mm -hmm. to a completely unrelated language family called Dravidian. Oh. Unlike Sanskrit, which like Latin is no longer spoken, modern Tamil survives as a living language for millions of speakers. So they're like stuck Dravidians to the Dravidians do not like it when North India tries to push its culture or language. Oh, see, South. they don't like that. The so that's why I said I thought it was like Hindi. Tamil people are urn burials dating from around 1000 BC at Adich Anadur. Amazingly, they found evidence there of the worship of a god with a trident and a peacock. Peacock! Very like the Hindu Tamil's favourite god today, Murugan. But the oh, Tamils the really have, leap like, the into world history when the Maurya Emperor Ashoka mentions the unconquerable southern Tamil kingdoms in his rock inscriptions made between 273 and 232 BCE. Which is impressive when you consider the fact that the Maurya Empire essentially conquered everything else. Oh, wow. This is right around the beginning of a Tamil golden age known as the Sangam period, lasting from the 3rd century here. BCE Learn to the 3rd century CE. At this time, Tamilicum was ruled by three Tamil dynasties, the Solas, the Seras and the Panjas. Oh. Unfortunately, there were no actual Panjas. <laughs> I was going to say that. Kingdom. I was like, the Pandas. <laughs> the Tamil kings were immeasurably rich and used their wealth to sponsor century-long poetry slams oh. called the Sangams I, I was going to say the capital, Coconuts. That's Madura, why they got those coconuts. male coconuts. and female poets would show off their works. Oh, These poets the created thousands of poems, oh, books poetry. and epic stories called Sangam, Sangam literature. Oh. Sangam literature is unique in how it doesn't seem to belong to any single class or religion. It was written by and concerns Hindus, Jains, men, women, farmers, kings, pandas, non-pandas, and everyone in between. 
One great Sangha poet, Poon Koon Krenar, emphasised the equality of all humans, saying, I am a citizen of the world, and everyone in the world is related to me. This was quoted by one of India's most beloved presidents, the Tamil Muslim aerospace scientist Abdul Kalam at the European Parliament in 2007. The Sangam literature tells us about a rich, cosmopolitan and multi-ethnic Tamil-speaking society 2,000 years ago, where Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism all coexisted peacefully, where kings would even invite priests to public debates on their beliefs. Sangam poems describe Madurai as so rich that it had a moat with secret underground passages large enough for elephants, large enough for elephants. Gates, and the scent of perfume <laughs> could be smelled miles away from the city where there were folks of every race buying and selling in the bazaars or singing to the music of wandering bands. So they. So oh, they how were the Tamils so rich? Okay. They were spicy. Oh, the spices! The world was a bland, yes, flavourless, unseasoned That's how America mess. was discovered, right? It tasted a lot like English food. This was until the because Tamils they went taught to search everyone for the way of the spice. A the first century CE Greek India, manual for sailors, the periplus of the Eritrean upon America. Sea says that the Tamils export pepper and other spices along with diamonds, woven textiles, pearls, ivory, malabatrum and other luxury items. What's malabatrum? Who cares? It sounds luxurious though. <laughs> Another major <laughs> export was cotton and silk clothing woven by women. Indian women would dominate I mean, this global trade beautiful. for the next Still the clothing years. like the colourful. Tamils this. traded so much that Pliny the Elder said India takes 100 million sesterces from our empire per year at a conservative estimate. That's about 10 tons of gold. What? China Is had the, the silk road, the, the Tamils coconut? had the flavour highway? No, the spice boulevard. Uh -huh. Whatever. They made themselves the centre of a global trade See? network that linked Europe, the Middle East, Africa, India, Southeast Asia and China. We've discovered massive hordes of Chinese, Iranian and Roman coins along the ancient Tamil coast. Tamil inscriptions have been found as far apart as Egypt and Thailand. A statue of the Hindu goddess Lakshmi got buried at Pompeii. And Tamil ambassadors met with Augustus Caesar in 20 CE. This trade made Tamil cooking the first international cuisine in the world. The word orange Y'all had the lockdown on the spices. The Ginger lockdown. comes from Tamil inchiver. Oh, and the rice word in orange loads of European languages comes from the Tamil arisi. Without the Tamils, Ireland's greatest contribution to world cuisine, the spice bag, would not exist. And honestly, I don't want to live in that kind of world. <laughs> That's true. Roman Who wants to live in a world with no spices? hundred recipes using Indian spices from yes. ostrich curry to curry tasty to peppered brain. Y'all know how to cook. That's what it is. They... They're like, they know how to season some food over Link there. to the cookbook is in the description, in case you need a laxative. Tamils got so rich off of their trade routes that just one temple, the Patmana Pasvami Temple, whose vaults were recently opened, has a treasure worth over $700 billion. What? This was accumulated over thousands of years from the donations from Tamil dynasties like the Saras, the Panjas, the Pallavas and the Solas. Some of the things in the temple include this golden Mahavishnu statue, tens of thousands of gold coins, a solid gold throne, is this where the golden comes elephants, in? a five meter long diamond necklace, and my personal favorite, a 30 kilogram the, solid It is gold the gold coconut. coconut. At what point does that stop being a coconut and start being a golden <laughs> ball? There are still unopened vaults in this temple, so we're still unsure of how much it's worth. Tamil merchants, monks, and crazy. craftspeople worked across Southeast Asia and lived in small communities there. Tamil merchants didn't just trade pepper with Southeast Asia. They traded the spiciest thing of all. Ideas. Oh! From the 4th century oh. CE on, kingdoms from Thailand to Vietnam to Indonesia were ruled by Hindu kings mm -hmm. and wrote using Tamil writing. Oh. Modern Khmer, Javanese and Thai scripts all descend from the Tamil Pallava script. The greatest monument to this cultural exchange is the originally Hindu temple of Angkor Wat in Cambodia the largest religious structure on earth. That's, By that's the end of the 13th huge. century, we even find the Tamil Hindu temple dedicated to Shiva all the way over in the Chinese part of Qinzhou, where a small Tamil community lived. The wealth and fame of the Tamil lands invited more than just merchants. A small Jewish community could be found in Kochi from the 6th century BCE. More even so came as refugees after diverse, the destruction of the second right? temple in 70 CE. 
and according to local tradition, the Jews were followed by St. Thomas, the Apostle of Jesus, who landed in India in 52 CE and started converting people to Christianity. From Thomas, India's current Syrian Christian community claims descent. In 629 CE, a mosque was built by Muslim merchants in Muziris, and you can still go visit it today, or a part of it at least, because the Portuguese blew it up in 1504, what? but like, it's still cool, you can still see. <laughs> it's so cool. Okay, so we're going to do a little time jump here. Let's see. Invaded by Buddhist warrior tribes, Jainism and Buddhism take over for a bit, rise of the Pallava dynasty, Hindu revival, ah, here it is. After the Sangha period, the next great Tamil golden age happened under the Sola dynasty, between the 9th and 13th centuries. Okay. Their greatest king, Raja Raja Sola, rose to the throne in 985 CE. He and his son quickly turned his modest kingdom into an empire that conquered most of South oh, India, wow. Sri Lanka and the Maldives. They took it all over the when Sola he came The used on. their massive navy, the largest in Asia at the time, to control the trade routes between Southeast Asia and China. When the Sri Vijaya Empire threatened to block Sola access to the Straits of Malacca, the Solas launched oh! massive naval attacks across <laughs> Indonesia and Malaysia and even kidnapped the Sri Vijaya king. And no one ever messed with their trade routes oh. ever again. <laughs> they were powerful, the weren't they? The 60,000 war elephants. The Sola king's I personal guard seeing... included the Padimuglir, or women bodyguards trained in elephants. Tamil martial arts and weapons. There are also mentions of women working as advisors and ambassadors, and using their own money to make large donations to temples. Raja Raja That's Sola right, girl power. his enormous wealth into building massive temples in a style called Dravidian architecture. The most well-known oh being the Raja powerful. Raja Jaswara Temple in Tanjavur. This 66 There's meter so much tall, go soaring so much I gotta go to Raja Raja Look at was one of the tallest buildings in the world at the time. Other than Raja Raja Temple, other Sola slash Dravidian architecture is also breathtaking. Like the Iara Teswara Temple, the Kanki Kanti Sola Puram Temple, and the Champa Karesuvarara Temple. Look how colourful Sola that is. temples That's also amazing. acted as banks. These temples received massive donations from the royals, and then they offered loans from those donations to farmers, villages, and merchants. Okay. Solar temples became this weird vehicle for redistributing wealth and reinvesting it in arts and local communities, making everyone richer. Wow, it's wow. no wonder why when Marco Polo came here in 1273, he called the Solar Lands the, the richest, richest province on earth. Oh, wow. Solar power declined in the 12th and 13th centuries. Buddhism and Islam replaced Hinduism in Southeast Asia, and Tamil lands in Kerala drifted away and developed their own language and culture, which resulted in the modern Malayalam language. Okay, so we're going to need to do another time jump. We have <laughs> right. Muslim invasions from the north, rise of the Vijayanagarap, who build the world's second largest city, arrival of the Portuguese, destruction of the Vijayanagarap by Muslim armies, Tamil they lands fracture into small states, ahead. and ah, here it is. No, 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 it can't be. Not you. Not you again. What? Honey Harold, it is a smashing civilization you've got there. It would be a shame if someone were to. Oh, this is when the British come? What? Tamilicum was split into small, competing states in the 17th century, which made it easier for the newly arriving European powers to invade. By the end of the 18th century, most of South India was under British rule. The Tamils resisted the British invasion. Okay. One example is that of the Queen of Shivaganga, Velu Nachiar. To protect British the wanted that wealth. From invasion, That's she built an army to need. resist the British imperialists. This army included a regiment of women soldiers. That's right! One of them, Kulili, volunteered to Girl power. a vital British ammunition depot that was located inside a temple. <sighs> Kulili and her fellow warriors easily entered the temple as worshippers because the British thought women were harmless. Unable to sneak we're weapons sneaky. in, they we're poured sneaky. oil over Kulili, oh. who then set herself on fire Jeez. and leapt into the ammunition depot, blowing it up and securing victory for her queen in the following battles. Becoming the first woman martyr in India's Why long she had to set battle herself, for freedom. Though? Despite acts like this, by 1858, the British crown had seized control of all of India. Famine quickly swept South India between oh, 1876 see? and 1870. That's what had, the British came in. Eight people. With the area devastated by famine, the British could dismantle the over 2,000 year old Tamil textile industry. As British textile manufacturers couldn't compete with Tamil textiles, so they destroyed all the Indian looms. Oh, then they pushed terrible. Tamils out of work as craftspeople and onto tea, sugar, coffee and opium plantations in India or sent them off across their empire as indentured servants. John Sullivan, a colonial oh. official in southern India, said, 
under their own dynasties, all the revenue that was collected in the country was spent in the country. Our system acts very much like a sponge, drawing up all the good things from the banks of the Ganges and squeezing them out on the banks of the Thames. India would eventually win its independence That's from right. Britain in 1947. In the first two decades of Indian independence, language became a battlefield in oh, India. Okay. In 1950, Hindi, the most spoken language in India, was selected as the sole official language of the country, with 1965 picked as the year the changeover from English would happen. Speakers of the Dravidian languages in the south didn't like Hindi because it was Sanskrit based, which they considered more alien than English. As 1965 approached, thousands of Tamil student protesters shouted, Hindi never! English ever in the streets of Seni. Four students set themselves on fire Why as a symbol of non-violent protest. Dravidian political parties made it clear that if Hindi became the official language of India, then oh. Tamil Nadu would secede from India. The protesters oh. won. The Official Languages Act Amendment of 1967 ensured the continued <laughs> use of English alongside Hindi you as never the hear official that anymore language these days, do you? up until People today. Setting themselves on Even fire now in India, Tamil Nadu is famous for its independent streak, love of its culture and language, and mm -hmm. for acting as the champion of Dravidian politics against the North. But Tamils don't only live in Tamil Nadu. Just a few kilometers away from there is the island nation known See, today as Sri Lanka, well, where Tamils make up 15% of the population. I've Sri Lanka is home to several ethnic groups. The mostly Buddhist Sinhalese are the majority, it. and the mostly Hindu Tamils are the second largest group. Both groups have been on the island for over 2,000 years. This island was known as Ceylon when it suffered three centuries of colonialism under Portugal, the Netherlands, and then their British Empire took over in of 1796. Of course. course. When the British arrived, they were like, how can I make everything worse? <laughs> oh, of course. Let's introduce inter ethnic <laughs> conflict. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, to spur hatred, the British chose Tamils for higher positions than the Sinhalese in the government. Oh. Then, in the Sri Lankan Highlands, Sinhalese Coming lands in were seized by the British and enslaved Tamils from India were settled there as plantation workers. These are Indian Tamils, distinct from the Sri Lankan Tamils who have lived in Sri Lanka for much, much longer. Sri Lankan Tamils live in the north and east, Indian Tamils live in the central highlands, and the Sinhalese live essentially everywhere else. When the British got kicked out of Ceylon, now Sri Lanka, in 1948, the majority Sinhalese took control of the island. Sinhalese nationalism exploded, oh, and soon okay. anti Tamil oh, massacres well, they, swept the island. Oh, well, y'all gotta get along. In 1956, oh, I 1958, hope they get along now. and 1977, which led to the formation of a guerrilla fighting group known as the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam, better known as the Tamil Tigers. On the 31st of May 1981, the Sri Lankan police burned the Jaffna Public Library to the ground, home to 97,000 books years, and containing but... irreplaceable artifacts oh. of Tamil history. Oh, Seeing the fire, one Tamil see refugee that. said, Burning it was as if my entire biography, oh. my history and the history of the Tamils oh, had been destroyed, wiped from the face of the earth as if we did not exist. Oh, don't. On July 23rd, 1983, the Tamil Tigers ambushed and killed 15 Sri Lankan soldiers causing another anti-Tamil oh, yeah, massacre to sweep so the country just... in an event known as Black July. Oh. The Sri Lankan civil war had begun. I didn't even know about this. I knew nothing about this. Look at it. That was only, what, 40 years ago? The Tamil Tigers were fighting for an independent Tamil nation in the Tamil parts of the island. As the war dragged on over decades, the Tamils became infamous for inventing the explosive suicide vest and for carrying out a suicide bombing campaign across Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan army himself? retaliated with brutal attacks against the oh. Tamil Tigers, which mostly resulted in the deaths and displacement of tens of thousands oh of innocent goodness. Tamil civilians. The Sri Lankan state is still undergoing investigations oh, for committing a genocide a against kid. the Tamils. This bloody war dragged on for 26 years, until the 18th of May 2009, when the leader of the Tamil Tigers, V. Pirapakaran, was killed and the Tigers surrendered. The war took the lives of over 100,000 people, with 40,000 Tamil civilians being killed in the final few months of the war. These are rough estimates, because a proper investigation hasn't been done. The war caused a mass exodus of Sri Lankan Tamil refugees to India, Australia, Europe and North America. Today around 8 million Tamils live outside of India and Sri Lanka, 
From the 19th century onwards, they went as indentured labourers across the no. British Empire, especially to Malaysia, Singapore, South Africa, Fiji, Mauritius, so and the sad. Caribbean, where many have kept their Tamil identity. Tamil this. is actually an official language in Singapore and Malaysia. Well, I think now it's time to take a look at Tamil culture. Yeah, yeah get the back. Culture. Religion. Today, about 88% of the Tamil population of Tamil Nadu are Hindu, 6% are Christians. 5.8% are Muslims, and Jains, Buddhists, and Sikhs make up the rest. The most important Tamil festival is Thai Punkal, a harvest festival dedicated to the Hindu sun god, Surya, that usually occurs on the 14th of January. This festival is celebrated by all Tamils regardless of religion though. Punkal means to boil or overflow, and refers to the traditional dish of new harvest rice boiled in milk with raw sugar. Punkal celebrations include decorating <laughs> cows, ritual bathing, parades, prayers, dances, creating art, and getting together with friends and family and exchanging oh, gifts. Nice. During Ponkel in Tamil Nadu, you might also see a, a Kutta. In this over 2,000 like year old into spark, the an Indian bull is released into a crowd of people Kinda and like then attempt the to grab the hump on the bull's oh, back with both arms and hang on to it for as long as that possible, sounds dangerous. attempting to bring the bull that to a full stop, dangerous. thus taming the bull. If they do so, they get a prize. If no one tames the bull, the owner of the bull gets a prize. There have be been many attempts to ban this sport in recent years, yeah, which has caused so massive popular backlash. Another interesting Tamil holiday is a, is a May festival the god Aravan, who is worshipped by transgender people called Tevrunar in Tamil. At this annual what? festival by at Kovakam, you'll see ceremonial marriages between festival goers and the god Aravan, oh. along with beauty pageants and dances hosted with the support of the Tamil Nadu government. In 2008, Tamil Nadu became the first state in India to allow people to legally identify as a third gender. Arts. Tanjore paintings and solo bronzes Look are some of Tamil's greatest contributions to world art. But one of the more humble yet distinct features of Tamil art is the kolam, which decorates the front of almost every Tamil home. Really? These are geometrical and floral designs made of rice flour. It's Each day the kolam is crafted by I women and then erased the next the morning to make room for a new one. It takes Today, a long in time. Tamil Nadu, Puts to five star hotels will all have a cola. Yeah. One of the most treasured pieces of Tamil sneeze. literature is the Tiruguru <laughs> by Tiru Vulavar, which had its origins in the Sangam period but was finalised a few centuries after. This is a masterpiece in ethics and living well. The Tiruguru is made up of three books of wise sayings on virtue, wealth, and love, huh. all delivered in quick two line poems. They like For example, poems there. the greatest virtue of all is non killing. Truthfulness cometh only next. Oh, like it also that. just stops midway and talks about how to build good forts and I'm always down for some fort talk. Charity and kindness <laughs> are also that. key aspects and it emphasizes non-violence and vegetarianism. Oh, like Avoidance of killing what? eating the meat of even one animal oh. is more meritorious than a thousand sacrifices. Save the the Tirukuru is vital Look how they to care Tamil about culture. everything. It pops up in songs, People, films like, and you know, books. It, the Every animals? bus in Tamil Nadu is legally obligated to have a verse from the Tirukuru on it. One of the Tamil's most famous dances is Paratana oh, I've seen this. This dance tells a story through complicated I think I've mood, seen a react hand to some gestures, of this. facial expressions and body posture. Yes. It also just looks incredible. It does. That's why I was I was so intrigued. Look at it. Food. Up and dance now. Rice is the staple oh, yeah, now of we're the talking most language. vegetarian Tamil diet. Bananas and plantains, jackfruit, coconut, lentils, oh, like tamarind plantains, and mango too. are also commonly Sounds used all delicious. All along delicious. with a huge amount of spices. You know they have their Traditionally, spices Traditionally, a Tamil them. meal is eaten off of a banana leaf. Some favourite Tamil mm. foods include the light and fluffy idli, the fried and spicy vadai, the oh. crispy dosa and the delicious fried banana bonda. And no Tamil dish is complete without a side of sambar, chutney or in Sri Lanka, coconut sambal. Tamils mm. also love their coffee, which they oh, brew the, in this I'm my South Indian device. Cinema. See, I should, I need Tamil to people are there. passionate about cinema. Based in the Kodobakum neighborhood and then, cinema, the Tamil yeah, is that Kaliwood? I know, that's the, the Kaliwood. The film industry I know about Kaliwood. Manny Ratnam's gangster epic Nayakam was and included the, in Time what is his name? Power, Power Star. Or, all time list. Rockstar. I actually watched a movie with one of Tamil yeah, cinema him. superstars, Rajinikant, where this happens, and it was an absolutely amazing few hours. Tamil cinema has even bled into Tamil politics. Three uh, chief ministers of the Tamil Nadu the state have power risen star out of Tamil became... cinema. Tamil cinema acts as a way for Tamils to preserve their independent and original culture by producing films in the Tamil language based on Tamil ideas oh, and culture. Great, great, I wish there were something like that for YouTubers. That was interesting. 
I mean, I knew a little bit about, yo, know, the Hollywood especially. I mean, I've watched the movies, definitely reacted, even to the dancing, the one dancing that they did. But a lot of the history I didn't know. I got so emotional, especially when showing the real video footage of like the little babies there and getting crying and, and the war going on. Oh, it breaks my heart to see that. It did. But I'm telling you, I and that was always one thing. Even before I started reacting to the India stuff, I like seeing pictures from Lanka and, and, and that was like one of the places I always wanted, I was like on my bucket list to go to. I was like, oh, I want to visit Sri Lanka one day. I want to visit. And then I started reacting to this and I'm like, well, I'm visiting everywhere in India. I'm making an India tour because I have gotten to know so many of the different cultures from the different places in India and, and the the entertainment that stuff that I do the Bollywood Hollywood Tollywood like all of them Hollywood Sandalwood you know there's so many and I was like there's so much in India so much differentness like I would just was focused on trying I'm like I gotta visit it all now but now to actually learn more about it that was interesting that was good it was long but I enjoyed it I'm glad I'm glad look I'm glad y'all made me come back to it and requested it because I did see it and I was like that was one I wanted to check out, but I was like, it was a long video, and I was, but requested, I was like, all right, let's do it, let's do it, not, so let me know what y'all think, comments, thumbs, all that, till next time, bye y'all.